Hello YouTube, what is going on? Shane2k here, and today I am bringing you my Week 3 XFL Power Rankings. Now, it was an interesting week by all means necessary. I really don't want to bore you with an intro, so let's just hop into things with my Week 3 Power Rankings. At number 1, who remains for the third week in a row, the Houston Roughnecks. I'm happy we got a very good game on both sides of the ball in this game. This was a no-brainer to keep them at first as they're the only undefeated team that remains. And the P.J. Walker, who is probable MVP, it's Cam Phillips' connection, remains to be unbeaten and my favorite duo in the league currently. At number two, I've put the St. Louis Battlehawks who jumped up the power rankings list. Killed New York 29-9 and moved them up. The first kickoff return touchdown in St. Louis of all places should be a playoff team this year. And if they figure out their quarterback a little bit more with Jordan Tamu and just become a little bit more consistent, I could see this team winning the championship, which would be very fitting for St. Louis's first professional football team in a while. At number three, we have the most surprising team of all time, the LA Wildcats. It sounds crazy to move any team up four whole spots because last week they were in the number seven spot, but they bullied the second best team last week at least, and the best defensive team in the league, and showed out in Los Angeles. This was a totally different team, and Carter was my favorite player to watch with all of his flips and hops into the end zone, and hopefully this is the first of many for this team, and as they have an easy schedule coming up, they could go 5-2, and two, or sorry, 6-2. and two. Do I see it? Not really, but it'd be a cool story at the end of the season. At number four, I'm putting the Dallas Renegades. The final score does not show this game justice whatsoever. It was a very big defensive battle in week three that was won by Dallas truly with a field goal after being up nine. Nothing good from Jones or anything was done special. They stayed in the number four spot. At number five, dropping three whole spots, we have the DC Defenders. What the actual hell happened to this team? They let the second worst team in the league last week dominate them wasn't close at all cordell jones threw a record four interceptions in only three quarters and that's when they put their backup quarterback and i stopped watching him huge loss for what looked like an incredible team just could not get it done this week really confused me but it's the xfl anything can happen at number six i'm putting these seattle dragons came out didn't shock me and it explains the drop of one spot from fifth to sixth just an average team and that's what they'll remain in all year most likely at number seven, I'm putting the Tampa Bay Vipers. They did really good against the Houston Roughnecks and shocked me. They lost by only seven, had multiple lead changes, and this wins game of the week. They just need to fix some kinks, and there's a shot. Just a shot they could slip into top four in the next three weeks. Giving them some respect, no longer making them last. Let's go, Tampa. And at number eight, the most embarrassing team in the XFL, the New York Guardians. They're worse than the Jets. They're worse than the Giants. They're worse than the Buffalo Bills a couple years ago. I don't want to speak to this team, if I'm being completely honest. I can't see them jumping back into a competitive position after putting up only nine points in the last two weeks and getting shut out last week and rocked by St. Louis this week. Yikes. For my game of the week pick, it will be Roughnecks versus Vipers in Tampa Bay. Houston 34, Tampa Bay 27. This was the first true battle of a game we've had all season, and it kicked off week three, and it was perfect. We all wished it went to overtime, but you can't always have what you want. Very good game. Only one turnover all game. Cam Phillips' hat trick for the second week in a row. First ever 300-yard passing game. An underdog putting up a huge fight against debatably the best team in the league currently. Offensive player of the week, Cam Phillips out of Houston, Roughnecks. Now, last week, I did not give him player of the week, even though he had a hat trick because P.J. Walker just did so good, and it was really tough. Second place was easily P.J. Walker this week again. Eight receptions for 194 yards, three touchdowns, and an 84-yard touchdown. Not much to say, just pure dominance out of Cam Phillips this week. And at the end of the season, I could see him definitely going to an NFL team. For Defensive Player of the Week, I have Steve Johnson out of Dallas with 14 tackles. Nothing much to say here. Um, Dallas won 24-12, and Steve Johnson put up the most tackles in an XFL game. Special Teams Player of the Week, Jake Powell out of St. Louis Battlehawks. 84-yard kickoff return and the first kickoff return touchdown. It's a no-brainer here. And Play of the Week was the 84-yard kickoff return touchdown by Jake Powell, the first of its kind. I'm just going to show it here.
And the game to watch next week to end the video, Houston Roughnecks versus Dallas Renegades. It's the Battle of Texas. Any game where we get to see PJ Walker and Cam Phillips, I'm a fan of. And I expect a big showing from Dallas in this game. I expect Landry Jones will show up big in a big game with nothing really to lose on his part. And PJ Walker and Cam Phillips doing PJ Walker and Cam Phillips type things. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. It helps out so much. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We are going for 80, 180 subscribers. Huh? And comment what you thought of the power rankings. And comment right now, going into week four, who you think will win the championship this year. That's all. I love you guys so much. Happy Monday. Peace out.